All right, so the next tool that we're going to talk about is a really cool tool that's by the guys at Informatica 64. It is called FOCA. Now, the reason why FOCA is such an incredibly useful and powerful tool for bad guys trying to break into your organizations is it has the ability to automatically pull down a wide variety of different types of files from the external facing interfaces in your environment. For example, when Google is crawling the internet, as we were talking a couple of slides, Google will index various files, and then you can actually do searches based on those files. So you guys remember the, the little demonstration I did where I said, hey, we can search for .doc files, we can search for .xls files, we can search for PowerPoint files, PDFs, and so on. But what makes FOCA interesting is in addition to just being able to pull down the individual files from a specific organization, FOCA also has the ability to extract the metadata from various documents as well. Now, what is metadata and why is that actually important? Well, metadata has all kinds of interesting things. It has things like usernames, has different versions of software, it has directory paths. It can be a virtual cornucopia of a whole bunch of evil that can be done against your organization. So we just got a question here from Brandon. He said, hey, could you run this against the SANS Institute? Well, um, sure, I, I guess we could run this against the SANS Institute. Let's take a look. All right, so like I like to say, this is kind of like a Julia Childs moment, right? So it's funny that Brandon asked me to run this against the Sands Institute, and I haven't paid him anything for this, but it just so happens that the demonstration I was going to do was the Sands Institute. It was either that or the NSA. Um, so what FOCA does is it allows us to automatically find all of the documents. So if we ran this against the Sands Institute, you can see that FOCA has the ability of pulling down documents, PowerPoint files, uh, PPS, Excel spreadsheets, um, a whole variety of different file formats. Now, the reason why FOCA focuses on these specific file formats that you can see in the upper right-hand side of your screen called extensions is because these particular elements are very ripe in metadata. Now, are these the only files that have metadata? Not even close. There's all kinds of additional metadata that exists in all kinds of files. Just these tend to be the most likely files you're going to identify and see metadata in. So let me go to a full screen here real quick so we can embignify what it is we're actually looking at. So you can see I pulled down eight documents from the SANS Institute. I pulled down, we have over here on the left, we've got various policies, visitor access policies, internet usage policies, uh, we've got social engineering policies, ethics guidelines. Now what these files are are a series of example policies that SANS has created and is distributed for free for anybody. If you need a sample visitor access policy, you can pull it down from the SANS Institute. Uh, if you need an internet usage policy to kind of develop yours, you can pull that down from the SANS Institute. But what's really cool about each of these different policies that exist is each of these documents have document metadata within them. So let's jump in and let's take a look at what was in that metadata. So I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side and I am going to open up all the documents that were identified. And then you can also see three Excel spreadsheets were pulled down. Now, I didn't pull down absolutely everything. There was over 700 documents on the SANS website. I pulled down eight, just to kind of keep things really, really simple. So here we have all of the users that exist. So these are all the different user IDs that exist on the, the files that are associated with it. So we have Alan Paquette, we have Cisco user, we have Sherry, we have Ryan Corvetti. Um, and how many times we saw that particular name? Alan Poller, of course, the founder of the SANS Institute, was in here as well. Stephen Northcutt, the grandfather of the SANS Institute, like employee number four of the SANS Institute. All of these different names. Now, what we can do with these various names, what we can do with these various names is we can then use these names in a spear phishing attack. Um, so we were working with an oil company a couple of years ago, a very large oil company in Saudi Arabia. And what had happened is a bad guy and a secure, well, security researcher slash bad guy under an assumed hidden name had crawled the entire external interface of this particular oil company and pulled off all of their documents. Now, in addition to finding things like usernames, we can see that we have usernames here, they were also able to identify very, very sensitive information in these documents from this oil company. They were able to find pressures and volumes, leases, agreements for all of these different oil plats. Now, let me explain a little bit how that works. Whenever you're working with oil industry, they do a lot of research. They like to find out exactly how much oil is available in different fields. They also have a lot of situations where the legal leases 
of the land that surrounds that oil field or makes up that oil field, you're going to have to enter into agreements with other people that have land over the same oil field. So if you actually know what the contracts look like, you know what the pressures and the volumes actually look like, then you have a very good understanding of what is driving that particular business and what would be sensitive for that business as well. And you can actually undercut them in the marketplace. We just had another question. Let's take a look at that question. Alex said, that would be a very evil phishing attack against an organization. It's funny that you mention that. Um, one of the things that we like to do is we like to take documents. This is something we do at Black Hills Information Security very regularly. We will pull down all of the documents from a specific website. And then we'll find a user ID and we'll find a user ID and an email. So here we've got some email addresses that were pulled from some documents from the SANS Institute. Uh, Corey Stellars at State Farm. We got a ku.edu, got Qualys. But more often than not, what we do is we take a username like Brian Cochran and we know that the email format for SANS is like first initial last name. So we'll do bcochran at sans.org. So what we'll do, let's say hypothetically we got this document from Brian Cochran. We'll take that document, we know it's from Brian, and then we'll send an email to Brian. We'll take that document and we'll insert malware into that document. And we're going to talk about how to do that on day three, whenever we talk about Metasploit, using tools like exe to VBA and exe to VBS. Now, for those of you that don't know, a Visual Basic application or a Visual, Visual Basic script can be put into a document as a macro. And we can insert entire malware specimens inside of a document as a macro. So I'll take that document. From, let's just pick on Brian Cochran. I'll insert malware into the document and then I'll email it back to Brian uh, just hypothetically and say hey there's lots of grammatical errors in this document they need to be addressed immediately. Now the reason why this is such a wicked effective social engineering attack is because Brian knows that document he's already created that document and many people abhor anytime anyone else finds anything wrong with something that they created. So we would send the email in, most likely he's going to open it, and any kind of pop-ups that show up, uh, they're probably going to accept, and then we'll gain access to that organization. Um, you do have to be careful with this. If any of you guys are network penetration testers or spying or penetration testers, you gotta be careful sometimes. Well, another organization that we were pen testing, we used this exact same technique, except we used it against the accounts uh, payable person. Now we got access to this person, we'll just call them Bob got access to Bob's computer system using this technique, but I'm just going to say it made getting paid by that organization exceedingly difficult over time. Um, basically, they didn't like to be picked on too much. So FOCA is incredibly powerful. It is free. You can download it. You can run it against your organization uh, today if you have permission. Now, the really cool thing about this is we always tie together the idea of preparation for an incident and the best way to be prepared for an incident where somebody's using FOCA, extracting document metadata and using it against your organization to find email addresses and users and trying to possibly send malware is to run it yourself and it doesn't cost you anything at all. Also, some other cool things that FOCA supports is it has the ability to go through and automatically search and use those kind of Google dork extensions to find various vulnerabilities in systems. So we can all use FOCA, and we can also do this through Google, where we can use extension RDP, we can search for things like test page for Apache web server, or welcome to Windows 2000 internet services. Now some people in this class are going to say, that's old. Exactly. Um, whenever you're pen testing, those are the low hanging fruit that are going to get popped immediately. When you're an incident handler, if you're not aware of those systems, those are going to be some of the systems that get attacked directly.